Hey there, Art Cognacs. We're going to analyze the shot at the end of season three of Only Murders in the Building. This video will include a small spoiler from a video that Eva Longoria posted on her TikTok. It is very small. It just has to deal with the type of round that was used to kill sets. So if you don't want to hear anything about that, leave the video now. But if not, stay tuned because we're going to get into it. As we know, Sats was shot at the end of season three in Charles' apartment while going to get a bottle of wine. The log line for season four states that the trio will traverse the courtyard into the west tower of the Arconia and delve into the twisted lives of its residents. I'm just taking a assumption here, but I believe if the shot came from the West Tower, that means Charles likely lives on the East Tower of the Arconia. Now let's get into that little spoiler. So I won't go into details about what it was exactly, but I mentioned it in my last video. Eva Longoria posted a TikTok, and within that TikTok, we know that says was shot with a 300 Winchester Magnum round. This is a very popular round for like hunters and people like that, law enforcement, ex-military. It's a very large, heavy duty round, lots of stopping power, usually a straight shot trajectory. Now, because of this type of round and the type of rifles it's usually in, plus what we saw in the trailer, we saw someone loading a round in a bolt action rifle that isn't necessarily from the killer's actual point of view it could be the trio theorizing about it but i am going to take a very good educated guess to assume that this is a bolt action rifle bolt action rifles and especially one of this magnitude or the round with this magnitude is for long range shooting and this is not a long range shot We'll explain why and how in order to legally obtain one of these weapons, a person must get a license through the state of New York, through the police department. It's not that hard to get, but you do have to go through background checks and training and things like that. So whoever does have this rifle, if it is owned legally, they are registered and that would make this person a lot easier to find within the Arconia. I can only imagine there's probably just a handful of people that probably have a license to carry or own this type of firearm, I should say, that happen to live at the Arconia. I imagine it would be pretty easy to get that list of residents, uh, a list of all residents and cross-reference that with those who have a rifle license that could do that and i imagine that the trio would use this information in their investigation in next season now don't have all the information to uh correctly get this information on the shot but i did look up the blueprints of the arconia and uh pictures and information about the bell nerd which is the actual exterior scenes the courtyard scenes for only murders in the building. The website for the Bell Nerd states that the courtyard is 2,200 square feet. So looking at the diameters of this courtyard, I was able to guesstimate that it's probably about 100 by 220 feet. So that would make the shot from one end of the courtyard to the other approximately 220 feet. This is actually a very short shot for this type of rifle. It's very high powered. I don't know the specific type of rifle that it was used in, but whatever it is, I would imagine that it could easily hit a hundred. And if it was some type of actual sniper rifle, at least 1500 easily, regularly, without a sweat and only shooting from 220 feet or so, give or take a little bit. It's a straight shot. It's very, very short. There's not much uh, leeway. And these rounds are known for shooting straight and having a high impact. There's not much drop off, especially at a shot for such a small distance. Now, I didn't pull out any uh, uh, pag of, I can't even say the word Pagatherian theorems or stuff like that. But I will tell you that Saz was shot on the 14th floor from approximately 220 feet away. When we see her get shot, she's about 10 to 12 feet from the window. Saz is six feet tall. She was shot 
in the center of her chest, I am assuming and that's a little bit under five feet because I'm six tall. And so we would be about the same height, so, uh, about the same height. So about five feet um, from the ground is where she was shot. The trio looking at the hole in the window, they all bent down quite a bit lower than this area on the chest would be for me or someone else of similar height. So that tells me the bullet hole on the glass is lower probably around four to four and a half feet. Because of that, I am gonna assume that the shot came from a lower angle and it's not that much of a difference. So I am going to um, very strongly assume that this person was on the 14th floor across the courtyard, but laying down in a prone position, probably with some kind of stabilizer or something to get a more steadier shot. Now quickly talking about the type of person who might have um, access to this type of rifle. Um, I personally believe that it was most likely a ex-military or police officer, but these type of people cannot afford to live in the Arconia. It's super expensive. So the most logical explanation is someone who's into hunting. You know, they're rich, they go off to the cabin for a weekend, a couple times a year and do their big game hunting. But if we do see one, when they delve into the twisted lives with a giant bear rug or antlers on their walls, I think it will most likely be a red herring because that would be too obvious to see the hunter as a suspect. I went through all of the people who we know live in the Arconia and are still alive that lived there in the past and none of them have any information that would lead us to believe that they were big into hunting and might possibly have some type of vendetta against Charles Saz or the podcast in general. The only person that might have some type of vendetta against them, that we don't know enough about their background to assume they might know something like this, is Jose Torres, Oscar Torres' father. He was very adamant about Mabel not hanging out with him, with Mabel not hanging out with his son. So there could be something there. It could have continued on, people talking about the podcast and things like that. So maybe that is the issue. Maybe he had some ex-military training or he was an ex-police officer before he became the building superintendent, even though it seems like he's more of a jack of all trades, engineer type person, but we don't know. We just barely saw him a little bit in the first season. So we don't have enough information, I believe, to assume that anyone that lives in the building could have any proclivities to go hunting, nor many people that live outside. My guess has uh, been on Marv this whole entire time. He's old enough to likely have been in the military in his younger years, came out after the war and just hung around and started doing other things. Uh, he never stated that he had a military background, but he could also hunt. We don't know and I think he it was stated that he has some mental issues and he definitely seems like he's got some uh, possible problems. I don't want to put anything on him, but there could be something there that's that leads into him possibly wanting to attack the podcast. I want to quickly go over John Hoffman, the showrunner and co-creator, stated that there would be consequences. This uh, season's about consequences, putting the podcast out there, or putting this thing out there and what the world does with it. And we know that at the beginning, the tenants of the Arconia was not a fan of it. Um, there may be some tenants who are still reeling from the issues of this podcast that has created in their life. I talked about the um, wallpaper, the views from North America, the French wallpaper that's in the trailer and the executive uh, conference room or whatever, where they're making the deal for their life rights. How this is a person's view of what North America is, even though it is nothing like it actually was. It showed uh, the indigenous, um, the black slaves and uh, European settlers living together in harmony when that is not really what it was. So it's this idea of betraying something that's not actually reality. And I feel that it's somewhat mirrored one with the TV show or film adaptation. Uh, as we know with adaptations, there's so many liberties taken. It's not how 
anything really is in real life. They make it bigger and better, even though the show is big. And they're going to change things to make it more entertaining, to make it seem more salacious and interesting. And in turn, the podcast unknowingly may have done some of those types of things to some people in the Arconia or outside of it. Uh, and they should know better because they've gone through uh, instances where media and just regular people have assumed the worst about them. But they have been known to slander people, even falsely accusing some for murder. So there are definitely consequences of putting out this idealized or this version of people that they portray in their podcast, which is not realistic to who they are in real life. And I think whoever this person is, they felt personally slighted by the podcast in some way. And it's likely that they're using it to take out vengeance. So I don't believe Saz was the target or Charles even specifically was the target, just the podcast in general for what they've done to them. The trio never really uh, thought about balancing what I guess they would call their pursuit of truth with what putting that out there will do in the way that they chose to do it, not thinking about the repercussions of all that. And I believe in the end uh, that they will feel partially at fault for Saz's death. I know they uh, somewhat did for uh, Bunny's death, but I think Saz's will hit uh, even closer to home once we uh, start getting more of the background and we will probably feel bad for the killer this uh, time around. The other seasons, I didn't really feel that bad, but I feel like the repercussions and, and though we won't justify what the killer did in any way, shape or form, we may actually understand where they're coming from and feel as if the podcasters did them wrong and we understand why, how wrong it was they went after them the way that they did. And I think that this may cause them, as it should, to be more introspective about everything that's happened. And then maybe, just maybe, they might decide to uh, stop doing it because they're not doing it how they themselves would even deem to be ethically uh, good. So possibly they'll stop doing the podcast and I think at the end, um, this is this is just a rant here. I'm doing another bold prediction for the end of season four, like I always do. But I think by the end, they're going to feel bad about what they've done and how they've handled the podcast and um, decide not to do it anymore because it's just not good. And it probably goes a little bit into the toxicity of fan culture and, and things like that. That is very prominent right now review bombing shows and gatekeeping fandoms and that type of thing that's why i think marv might have something to do with it but wh whoever it is they will end up feeling really bad about it feel somewhat uh responsible for creating the situation in which this happened and then decide to stop making the podcast and in their um time of coming together and maybe stepping apart because of everything that's happened, someone very close to them will die. And that will be the catalyst of them starting their last hurrah and figuring out what's really going on in the Arconia. Oh, well, that was the uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I know we're expecting a trailer to happen probably within the next two weeks. We're only a little bit over a month away of uh, season four of Only Murders in the Building. So whenever that final trailer comes out, expect a video from me as soon as possible to try and figure out what's going on. I probably have a better idea then. But either way, let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was a resident who possibly killed Saz, or do you think it was someone outside? I know there's not much to go on, but just tell me your thoughts about anything whatsoever. Thank you guys for watching. Um, hopefully next time I can get some graphics in here so you don't have to see me sit on my bed. But
but uh, have a good uh, day or evening, whatever time it is for you. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll see you on the rooftop.